Okay, 10.8, collisions in and momentum in two dimensions. So really guys, this chapter is about how to deal with different problems by breaking them up into components. Okay, so we've already seen, let me just get some clean space here. We've already seen projectile motion and then we can break it up into its X and Y components. We've seen there's friction um, and we break up these contact forces into Y um, and X. Hey, remember, contact forces into vertical and horizontal, gravitational forces into vertical and horizontal. <coughs> Do you see how we're applying um, two-dimensional motion or two-dimensional analysis to these different problems? Well, we've also, we also apply this to collisions in two dimensions. So recall that before, if you've got two objects approaching each other and they collide, and then they move away from each other. Remember that your delta P is equal to zero. If you consider both of these objects as your system, then your total momentum was equal to zero, which means delta P for object one, if that's one, that's one, that's object two and two, plus delta P for object two is equal to zero, right? So the change the change of object 1's momentum plus the change of object 2's momentum is equal to zero. That's if you include, obviously, if you include both of them in your system. But now what happens... Oh, and the other, that was the one equation. The other equation was your coefficient of restitution, which is V12 final divided by V12 initial. So these two equations would allow us to solve uh, problems related to these collisions. Um, remember, velocity is in here, uh, and velocity is in here. So it would allow us to determine any unknown velocities. Okay. Now, what happens if we've got two objects moving at each other, but from an angle? So they're no longer along a single line, a single axis, but they're now moving like this. They, they, they collide, they go and then they move off at some other unknown um, directions. Okay? So when you've got motion like this, again, now we apply, uh, we break things up again into X and Y. If you've got the velocity, say this is 1 and that's 2. And let's just draw it again. There's object 1 and there's object 2. So you've got velocity 1 as a vector. You've got velocity 2 as a vector. Uh, initial, initial, I, initial. And you've got velocity 1, final. And you've got velocity 2, final. Okay, so velocity 1, they, they collide. And this one moves off like that with its final velocity, that one has an initial and it has its final velocity. So we can still apply these equations, but what we want to do is we want to say um, momentum, we want to break it up into its x and y momenta. So delta p x, so that the total change in the momentum in the x direction is zero and the total change in the momentum in the y direction is zero. Okay, so we want to treat these in terms of their x and y components. So what does this mean? Remember delta, delta p means with delta p1 x plus delta p2 x is equal to zero. That means the total change of this object in the the total change of the momentum in the x direction um, plus the total cha the change in momentum of this guy in the x direction is zero. So this is going to be m1 delta v in the x, delta vx, which is v1 final in the x direction. So that means it's going to be this component v1 final x. 
So V1 final X minus V1 initial X. So it's going to be this guy. V1 initial X direction. So it is the change in momentum of object 1, just the X components of the change in velocity. Okay? And then, of course, M2, V2, V2 final, X, minus V2 initial, X. So now, go and calculate the X component of V2 final. Go calculate the X component of V2 initial. And, so, and this equals zero. All right? And you do the same thing for y. You say m1, then delta v y for uh, object 1, plus m2, and delta v y for object 2. And you're going to get these equations. That's where these equations come from. So we're just saying momentum is conserved in the x direction, and me momentum is conserved in the y direction. Okay? So let us see if we can do a problem.